In this video, we're going to review um, how to analyze the Ethercat telegram being exchanged between an Omron PLC and a Festo servo drive. Now, this can be any other Ethercat master, you know, in this particular for this particular case that I've been working on, it's an Omron PLC, but it could also be a Festo uh, PLC a back off PLC, whatever Ethercat master you can get your hands on. Um, so right in front of you on the screen, I have the topology that I have laid out in my desk right now, which is basically this laptop that I have right now where I'm recording. This is connected via TCP IP directly to this device. This device, it's called Tap Curious. It's created uh, or it's marketed by a company that's called Cumbus, so that's K U N B U S. I believe it's um it's phased out, but maybe they have a newer version or something, or I don't know. Maybe you can get another type of device that does the same thing. Basically, what this device does is that it it intercepts the um, communication that happens between two devices. So you see this connection right here. This connection right here. It's uh it's almost uh. There's almost no latency. I believe uh, on the website on from Kumbos, they say that there's zero latency, so there's no delay. Uh, but basically, it just intercepts the data that's coming over uh, uh, some sort of Ethernet communication from this port to this other port. So in the actual application, this PLC here on the left, of the, the Summer PLC is connected directly to the Festo servo drive. What we're doing for the purpose of this analysis is we're intercepting the, the telegram or the communication and, and analyzing it here. So <clears throat> let's have a look at um, how this is going to work. And basically, I'm going to use two pieces of software mainly, which is going to be one of them is going to be Wireshark. And the other one, it's going to be um, the Sysmic Studio from Amron. Um, at one point, I'm also going to utilize uh, the command prompt. So I'm going to show you how to do this uh, directly using uh, T-Shark um, from Wireshark. But we'll get that. We'll get to that later. So first things first. I'm going to um, start a new capture and actually do it here. Uh, close. So when you open when you open Wireshark, it basically looks like this, where it's going to show all of your uh, network interfaces. In my case, the, the, this laptop, I'm just connected directly with uh, an Ethernet cable to the Ethernet port, and then I'm going directly into that Tap Curious device, right, via TCP IP, as I as I showed on the on the previous image. So now you have to select your network interface. In this case, mine is is this one, Ethernet. So I double click on it, and then it's going to start um, going to start capturing data right away. Now there's going to be a lot of packets, as you can see here. There's many packets. You know, within I don't know five seconds, there's already like ten thousand packets. So I'm going to stop it right now, and then you're going to see. Uh, I already have it marked here for you for the for making this video video uh, simpler, but here you're going to see that. There's um, in all of these packets. Oops. If we look at the last two ones, last two packets, is uh, number uh, ten thousand three hundred seventy-two and ten thousand three hundred seventy-three. So let me start with the very last one, ten thousand three hundred seventy-three. Under you, you know, if you go down under the Ethercat Telegram. For this for this particular packet and you go all the way down to this lrw section here is where you're, you're going to find the process data for within ethercad which is a pdo right this is the data <clears throat> that we're transmitting to the drive so that the omron plc is transmitting to the festo servo drive and on the other packet on this one 1372 this is the data under the same thing, LRW. This is the data being transferred from the servo drive, Festo servo drive to the Omron PLC, or from the from the Festo servo drive, which is the Ethercat slave, to 
the Omron PLC, which is the Ethercat master. Okay. So how do we figure out what these numbers mean? Well, in the user manual, I'm going to show that here. If you download this user manual, um, this is a user manual for the CMMTAS servo drive, software user manual. Um, here you can find, uh, which page was it? Um, search for PDO. Here you can find the, the structure for the PDOs here, PDO mapping. And then if you scroll down here, you're going to see the control word. So the receive mapping or receive PDO and then the transmit PDO or TX, right? Status word and then control word. So this the receive is, this is received by the CMMT, right? And the transmit, this is sent by the CMMT servo drive. And how, how do we know this? Because for example, here it's transmitting the actual position, position actual value. On the receive, because remember this is being received by the Omron PLC, it this is sending or this is, this is sending the, the target position. Okay. Or this is being received by the by the CMMT, that's why it's received. So target position okay so now i what i did here for the simplicity of not having to navigate between the pdf and, and so on i just added this as an overlay so i could show you so i'm gonna be you know switching between those two so let's have a look right now this um what i'm going to do is it's a little difficult to be running or i, I didn't find a way to be running the uh, like uh, with a certain frequency running Wireshark. The only way that I found is by utilizing this uh, T-Shark from Wireshark on the command prompt. And basically, if we utilize this command here, which is basically T-Shark, this is the application, um, minus I, or dash I six, this is my the, num, the network interface number six, dash C two, this is how many packets do I want to acquire? So this is count, I believe, two. And then T uh, dash T fields. So I believe this is, I, I will have to read it again, but what I found is that this is specifying that I, I want to receive or print the fields on the command prompt. And then here with the dash E, I'm specifying which fields are the ones that I want to acquire. How did I find out, for example, this field? You can go back to Wireshark and then since we know that it's under the LRW and it's this data, you can right click on it and then um, copy field name. And then you just paste it somewhere else in a notepad or something and that. So if I do that and I open notepad and paste that. So there you go. That's how I, I figured that out. And so if we run that, it's basically going to acquire those two packets or the last two packets, right? Which are the transmit and receive. So it's coming along now. So now you can see it here. So these are the ones that we're interested in. So here's the data being sent by the Omron PLC. And here's the data being sent by the Festo server drive. So how do we know what each of these mean? Well, Remember that we have these, uh, what you can see on your screen right now, this is the overlay. So let's start with this. And I'm just gonna show you a couple. So this portion over here, 0D00. These are actually flipped, okay? So it's actually, it's actually 000D. So if I open a calculator, and then enter the programming mode. Uh, here, I put it somewhere we can see it. Here, I'm gonna type in 000D, which is basically just the D. In decimal, that's a value of 13, right? Okay, where is this value being sent from? So at this time, we go to 
me just close all of these other calculators. And okay, so at this point we go into Sysmex Studio, and here my drive, my function block on Sysmex Studio, is sending a thirteen. Okay, so this is where this value is coming from. Now, if I enable the drive, you can see now instead of a thirteen. Now it's a 15, right? So let's run this again. And let's take a look at that same value. Okay, it's capturing. There it is. So now that value says, remember it's these two um, sections, right? So 0F and 00, zero they are inverted. So it's 000F. Zero, zero, zero so if we take a look at what 000F means, that's basically an F, that means decimal 15. Okay. So that's how we capture the control word. At le the very least, we're getting the control word. Now, let's take a look at the data being sent by the CMMT. So if we take a look on your screen, um, the status word, so the status word right here on the on the function block, it's saying that this, the current status word is 1591, 1591. So is that the case? Let's see here. So if we type in a 1591 in hex is 637. Where is this 637? If we take a look at the uh, the little table that you have in front of you, it says that the status word is the very first portion of that telegram or that data, right? So it's right here, right? And remember that it's inverted. So six three seven zero six three seven zero six three seven. It's basically telling me that the current status word is what one thousand five hundred. In 91, you can see it on the status word. Oh, and I'm sorry, you couldn't see it before. Let me move this a little. This. Now you can see it there. 1,591. Um, I'm actually going to move this. Uh, move this a little bit out of the way. Maybe put them in here next to me. So. So 1,591, all right? Now, another interesting piece of information or data that we could see here is the position actual value, which you can see on the third position on the, on the right-hand side on the table on the right, it's status word, then modes of operation display, and then position actual value. What is my current position? It is... 2,605. Okay, so if I look, type that in, 2,605 in hex is A to D. So what we have to do here now, um, let me probably leave this open. So we look at the table, it says it skips one cent, which is one byte. So it skips this, um, these two zeros here. And then the next four characters, or the, the next two bytes, should be the actual value position. So here we can see 0A to B with this change. The 2605, 0A to C. Why? Maybe I'm missing a um, value. Let's see in hex A to C. It's 2,604. Maybe it's oscillating a little bit. So if, actually, if I, I'm moving the, the shaft. Oh, you know what? Maybe it did change. So before it was 2604 at one point, but this is not updating continuously, right? So let's update it and see if that value actually changed. Uh, 
updating now. Okay, so it did change. Maybe when I, I last time that I run this, this little script, um, the position changed just by one unit. So now we can see here 2605, 2605, it's A to D, which is here, 0 A to D, right? Perfect. So what else can I show you here? Um, I think that's basically it. This is this is a way for you to decipher this data. And again, I did this just because it's easier for me to just run this command here that I showed you on the command prompt, and you know, run it every time that I do that I make a change in the function block. But you could also, you know, run it run it directly here in Wireshark, right? You could run it continuously here in Wireshark, and then. Just I, I didn't find a way of always showing the last. Uh, I'm I'm constantly hitting my the end key on my keyboard, but otherwise you know it keeps updating here the last packet. But this below doesn't update. But here you can also find the data. Right, the data is right here. If we stop this again and we look at the very last telegram, remember this one is telegram. Has a zero F, which is basically saying that it's sending a control word of 15. And the, la the last telegram or the one before it is the one from the CMMT drive to the Amram PLC. So this is basically sending the status word, the modes of operation display, and the position actual value. And here you can see the same thing, zero A to C, which is 2604. So that is a way of utilizing this this device, this tap curious device, and um, deciphering the Ethercat telegram. <laughs>